Good afternoon, and welcome to the May 17th, 2021 uh, meeting of the House, excuse me, of the Education Finance Conference Committee. Caught myself there, Mr. Chair. Uh, and if the committee legislative assistant for the House could please take the roll. Chair Dabney. Present. Chair Richardson. Present. Representative Hassan. Present. Representative Kresha. Present. Representative Pryor. Representative Pryor. All right, present. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. And that completes the roll for the House. Thank you, Ms. Sunderland. Ms. Donovan? Chair Chamberlain? Present. Senator Dornick? Present. Senator Duckworth? Here. Senator Eichhorn? Eichhorn, present. Senator Weger? Weger, here. That completes the roll for the Senate. Thank you very much, Ms. Donovan. Uh, members, as, as uh, I assume the Members and public is aware of the leadership, uh, five-way leadership uh, between the House, the Senate, and the administration reached a budget agreement uh, at two minutes to med midnight yesterday, apparently, uh, and have signed off on that agreement with a number of stipulations to it. Most importantly for this group, uh, our budget target is $525 million above base for the 21-23 biennium and $675 million above base for the 24-25 biennium. Uh, as members in the public are aware, today is the final day uh, constitutionally for the 2021 session. Uh, at midnight tonight, uh, we are unable to continue to meet as a conference committee. Uh, we are hopeful uh, and expecting that we will instead be uh, all properly appointed by our leadership to be members of a working group. Uh, I, I haven't talked to the speaker, Mr. Chair, but I'm, I'm, I'm feeling lucky uh, that uh, we will all be back here uh, to negotiate out a, a, an agreement, mutually agreeable agreement, uh, that will go to the respective bodies when we reconvene, uh, likely sometime in June. The agreement by the leadership includes a stipulation that we have our spreadsheet uh, completed by 5 p.m. Friday, May 28th, and that any language uh, items be agreed to by June 4th. Mr. Chair, just checking in, any difference uh, in understanding? No, Mr. Chair, that's what I got to, thank you. All right, thank you for that. Uh, we did want to review for the public uh, the items that have been agreed to already by this conference committee. And the House does this with the understanding that these items will carry forward into whatever final agreement we reach. Uh, I will defer to staff. I believe uh, staff has posted a document uh, to the conference committee's webpage that includes all of the items that were voted on. Uh, what do we need to do more than indicate that that item is on the web page? Is there another way that we should indicate so that the public uh, and members are clear on which items have been agreed to? Any advice? So, uh, Mr. Chair, barring objection, I assume that that list of agreements uh, previously established is agreeable to the Senate and that carrying those agreements forward into our final document is also agreeable to the Senate. Yeah, yes, Mr. Chair, we will, re we'll of course, review it just for accuracy, but uh, if we agree to them, then our intent is to have them in the bill that comes to the floor um, uh, in June. So but we'll just, we'll, we'll review it for accuracy and then, uh, but the intent is to have anything we agreed on in the final bill, yes. All right, thank you very much for that. 
Now, Mr. Chair, uh, leadership has been a little thin on uh, details going forward uh, beyond those couple of deadlines. Uh, but I think the House's preference is that we continue to meet and work towards a conclusion on or, on or about, well, no, on or by, let's, let's say on or by the May 28th and June 4th deadlines that have been stipulated to. Uh, I am hopeful that we would exchange the gavel on the every other day basis, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday for the Senate, uh, as we have been. Uh, and I know staff is looking as to whether we retain our time slot for the legislative TV so that we can, uh, as needed or desired, reconvene uh, for the public transparency part of the process. Is that your understanding as well or, or preferences, Mr. Chair? Well, a, a couple of things, Mr. Chair, uh, Chair Richardson, is that um, so we all know that uh, in general, I'm in agreement with that. I like the way the time slots worked out. It was, we didn't get conflicted. But what I would think going forward, as most of you know, and you know, with the end of regular session, the conference committees and all these things dissolve and we start into something new. And unless the uh, uh, governor and the leadership of the two bodies agrees to reconstituting committees, the committee would not be reconstituted. So we would see that we would, the chairs, you, uh, you, Mr. You, Chair Davney and Chair Richardson and myself and our team would meet as needed to discuss, uh, discuss our offers and negotiate. And then it would be our responsibility to keep our members apprised and others uh, updated as well. But it's my understanding that we wouldn't have these committees going forward. There's no formal conference committee but I certainly um, uh, willing to work with you on when we meet. So I don't know that there would be a need for the gavels and, and that sort of process. So that's the way I see it. We meet three, the three chairs and the team meet as needed, as well as the commissioner uh, and the department uh, all in one room or zooming, however you prefer to discuss offers and work through these details. So that's, a, that's what I'm looking at. And I, Mr. Chair, you make a good point about uh, we actually need to be formally created as a working group after today uh, and, and see what if there's direction then from our leadership. Uh, mm -hmm. We do uh, appreciate your mentioning the commissioner as well. Uh, the commissioner and the department are obviously an important part of this process and, and getting to, I think, a goal we established at the beginning of this conference committee, which is getting a bill on the governor's desk that he will sign. And uh, they're, they're the best sources of information on what the governor will or will not sign. So uh, appreciate that. I think uh, the public part of the process is important to the house. So depending on, on stipulations from the leadership and access to technology, uh, we may still be wanting to convene from time to time to make sure that the public is uh, aware of the process and where we're at. It also may uh, tend to increase or decrease the amount of email coming into my inbox. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and that's not a bad goal itself, I'd suggest, Mr. <laughs> Good point. No, I, I think I think if we agree to that parameter, those parameters that the uh, governor's office, the House and the Senate teams will meet uh, as needed, and then I think we can probably work out where then we can uh, if there's something where we need to, if we wish to keep the public, well, we wish to keep the public informed, but how we go about doing that, I think something like that is is fine. I'm just also thinking about staff time and how we, because I just don't want to get together to get together. You know, I want to, I think it'd be best for all of us if we, when we do meet as a larger group that we're doing something fairly productive and uh, can move forward and advise the public about where we're at. So. I'm agreeable to something like that, but I'm ready to, uh, well, so for, for my part, you know, I, the next step is to, we start talking about offers and then, and uh, sending them back and forth and then working from those sheets and negotiating through is what I'm going to see. And unless you would like to meet with the commissioner and the team ahead at, at a different time, just to talk about something, 
via Zoom. Otherwise, we'll get to work on doing reviews and and um, getting an offer together and send it over. And we'll be doing the same thing, Mr. Chair. Representative uh, Chair Richardson, any uh, comments, observations, plans, thoughts from you, ma'am? Uh, thank you, um, Chair Dabney. And um, uh, I've appreciated the opportunity to work through uh, several of the policy uh, provisions and hope that we can continue those conversations as well. I think that there are still um, a number of major things that uh, we could find some alignment and agreement around as well. So looking forward to further conversations. Very good. Thank you, Chair Richardson. Representative Krisha, I see you have your hand up. I do. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and um, to the Senate chair as well. Uh, so speaking uh, strictly from the minority position uh, in the House and, and probably closer to the public, because uh, I realize that many of these conversations will happen in smaller settings. Uh, just a couple of things that I would like to have clarified and request uh, for both chairs. Can you please let you know, any, any members that are going to be part of the working group or let how that working group is going to be decided. Please put that together and, and clearly state that for members as well. Um, I, Chair Dabney, agree with you that we should be as transparent as possible. Um, I realize, as I said, the small settings, but I will, I will just say publicly, um, I also realize the lack of transparency and, and what has happened with the tribunal of Speaker Hortman, Senator Gazelka, and the governor. Um, is not good practice, and hopefully we can avoid that as much as possible here, but do understand the dynamics. The other side that I would bring up for all the members in the committee, um, we do dissolve, and that means the, the budget and it becomes a working group. I'm sure there are many people in this committee or whoever that working group have other jobs that will have to take time off and all that. So please make a consideration for that, and um, if we're going to do this and understand the impositions of what it's going to take, uh, to move this through a special session. So please be as clear as possible, outline things, talk about budgets and, and talk about how members are gonna have to manage their other life so that we can be as efficient as possible. Um, and good luck. Thank you, Representative Krisha. Uh, points well taken. Uh, and I, I won't speak for the chair, but uh, I think we both stated in a, a preference for not ending up in front of the tribunal. Uh, the, the less time in the woodshed, the better. So perhaps that's added motivation. <laughs> that was a god awful thing we used. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, any other? Oh, Commissioner, my apologies. Uh, and I'm, uh, members, I'm going to have to step off for just a second and vote. Uh, but, Commissioner, if you have anything to share. No, I just really appreciate having the opportunity. Oh, I didn't realize I'm sorry, my video's not on. I just really appreciate having the opportunity to be able to connect and um, I'm looking forward to uh, partnering with each of you to be able to, to find and identify places where we can collaborate and do what's best for our students and staff and communities and families. So thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Ain't the technology grand. Uh, with that, members, if, if there's no other, any other comments uh, or questions from members? Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chair Richardson and Commissioner. We'll be in touch soon to see how we, uh, so we can proceed and get this done by the 28th. I'm confident we can do that. Uh, from my perspective, I think we got a ton of dough to, to use here. Maybe not from yours, but I think we can, uh, at least from the budget side, we can get to a good agreement that helps the kids. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate your confidence and, and share it as well. With, with that, members and public, uh, the 2021 Education Finance Conference Committee is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you to staff for all of your efforts.